Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be playing some more Hearts of Iron 4. We're going to be playing Kaiseroik 1.0.4, The Empire Strikes Back. If anybody gets that reference, uh, type it in the uh, comment section. You may be wondering, or maybe not, why I don't have uh, my camera. Um, that is because I'm just, you know, uh, doing something a little bit different this time. Um, so I'm going to be doing my first, um, Basically, what's gonna happen is, um, I'm actually gonna make it seem like we're actually in the game, not just chilling outside it. So, that means no, no real, um... No real camera, none of that stuff. So, I know that Empire Strikes Back, which is, you know, Wilhelm and uh, Germany as a whole, usually. Um, Middle Europa. But I'm not going to do that. I am going to be playing as the... Um, I'm going to be playing as the U.S. of A. Because they're actually pretty interesting in this mod. Um, so, basically what's going on in this mod is... Uh, Germany... Um, you know... Is kind of... Well, they kind of won World War One. The U.S. didn't get involved at all. Um, so Britain and France both had uh, a revolution, and um, then their rulers led to Canada for Britain. Uh, and, um, Africa. Um, they, they also have, like, a bunch of other nations down here. Like, Poland, Portugal, South Africa, Patagonian Workers Front, Argentina, Patagonian Workers Front, and Argentina are actually... Fighting each other, but uh, yeah. So we're gonna be playing as the U.S. of A. Um, so we're in the middle of the Great Depression and we have a political crisis. So what's really going to happen is that after this introduction I'm not really going to be speaking as much there's also going to be some pauses since I just figured out how to pause on OBS because I'm an idiot so yeah so we are going to be having a civil war we are going to be um I think we are going to go as the um the American Union state. So here we go. In nineteen thirty six, the USA 
was in a crisis. The Great Depression was in full swing. Stability was at an all-time low. Nobody wanted war. And the market... Ignore that. And the Republicans were at an all time low in support. However, because of the stupidity of the American Congress, specifically the stupidity. of the House of Representatives. Herbert Hoover was given another term as president. Long, Huey Long in the South has got, has given rise to a huge threat. But, and Jack Reed in the North also presents issues. Now, with the 1936 elections looming, the only choice America has is which threat can be nulled first. However, while we were preparing to aid our civilians that were suffering so much in the Great Depression. Black Monday hit. On the 3rd of February, 1936, the Berlin Stock Exchange stopped sinking. It plunged. Fueled by the instability of the market, panic selling erupted as soon as the stock market opened on Monday morning. It, it it will be felt through the entire world. The German golden age has ended. Despite the Great Depression continuing and stability plunging even further, the 1936 election is possibly not going to be controlled by the government. As such, many between the Republicans, the Democrats, and the Farmer and the Farmer Labour Party have opted for a coalition. This plan is unlikely to be popular with lower ranking members of the parties but maybe the only thing that can prevent the radical parties from gaining strength. We will have a coalition. And, of course, with instability falling further and further and further, the AFP and the SBA have gathered militia paramilitary militias to be specific this will lead to a disaster if we can't stop them soon and now finally Herbert Hoover wants to do something in 1932 the Gardner Wagner bill was vetoed. But the employment relief efforts are seen as the only way to prevent widespread collapse. However, Long and Reed are sure to the pressure put pressure on the Garner bill.
However, after weeks of negotiations, a number of establishment senators have broken ranks over the coming vote on the Garner Wagner bill. Most notably, Robert Wagner, one of the bill's proposals. The AFP and the SPA will not agree if any concessions are made to the other group. We have, of course, now we have to force the establishment to compromise with the AFP before it's too late. In order to aid the vote, the establishment elected Quentin Roosevelt for the vice presidential candidate. Son of Theodore Roosevelt and cousin of FDR, Quentin Roosevelt has such a political legacy. With the voting continuing and with Huey Long speaking for the bill, the bill, the Garner Wagner bill was approved.
And of course, even after all we've done, nature just has to hit us. The great heat wave of 36 sent temperature reaching 121 degrees Fahrenheit or 50 degrees Celsius. This is pretty much, this is definitely going to ruin our stability and our economy even further. The results are finally in from what has probably been the most ideologically contested presidential election the United States has ever witnessed. None of the three major parties have secured enough votes, however, which means that the House of Representatives has to vote on the winner for the second time this decade. For the time being, victory goes to Floyd Olson. Of course, the AFP and the SPA both contested the election results. Even as the new year arrived, so did the instability. The SPA launched a strike on New Year's Day, which has crippled the industries of the North. With Floyd Olson inaugurated, he immediately began his velvet glove and announced negotiations with Jack Reed. The vice president had the vice president heads. West, as um, the vice president had West, as President Olson went north. And Mr. The first time Mr. Roosevelt's agenda is a meeting with the Zumbo Longhorse Men's Unions in Seattle. Jack Reed has accepted the invitation. Now it's time to see. If Lloyd Olson truly does have his silver tongue, even as negotiations began, Long ar arrived in Chicago to uh, join the negotiations. Long did have no business there, but we allowed. But we have to allow him to participate. Long and Reed argued, and, but we had to work with both men. The negotiations reached an impasse, and now the general staff realizes that's only a matter of time. MacArthur and the army have removed Olsen from command. It has finally come to this. Jack Reed calls for action. He's given a rousing radio broadcast from Chicago, urging all of his followers to rise up against the twin tyrants of General MacArthur and Huey Long. Within the hour, a number of governors across the Steel Belt have announced their support and declared both Huey Long and General MacArthur as having no true authority. The governors have been bolstered by these supporters. Within days, have overtaken army posts and erected roadblocks throughout the northern states. The disaster has begun. In a fiery speech in Baton Rouge, Huey Long has spoken about the need to fight both the traitor General MacArthur and the pretender Jack Reed. Both are tyrants that need to be toppled, and only the AFP, under his guidance, can cleanse America. 
He has already gained ready listeners among a number of Southern governors, all of whom recognize that they recognize the authority of neither MacArthur nor Reed. And we're standing by the country.